And I think there's a there's a tension and, and interest. Once again, this is a great travel photography lens. So you want to capture what's it like being in Melbourne? What's the colours and life like? Bang. This does that perfectly for it. And we're talking about an, a lens that is at four, so I see a beautiful four life. I yeah. see this oh, focus yeah. in the background. If we want photos to be good, we need to change the perspective that we see the world at. I mean, yeah. there's, 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 you, you can't fault the, no. the, the individual hair detail is, is really crazy. quite remarkable. So. Hi guys, we're here today with Glyn Lavender. Glyn is one of our pro team members for Tamron. Uh, Tamron have asked Glyn to shoot some of the stills for uh, promo for one of the new lenses that they are now, I guess would be launched by now. Uh, if you're seeing this, then uh, then this lens is launched. Tell us about the lens and tell us about your experience shooting with it. Um, well, the lens is the new uh, Tamron 17-50 f4 for Sony mount. Um, wide angle to small telephoto, general purpose all around carry lens. Um, one of the things I think uh, is the benefit, the biggest benefits about it is it's, it's a small lens. Mm. Um, one, you know, we all love the small mirrorless cameras and, mm. and then plonk massively large lens on the front and take away a lot of the benefits. So Tamron's tried to create a lens that's incredibly versatile, mm. but maintaining a small form factor to really give it a, a general, I can carry this anywhere, use this anytime kind of lens. Not that you would have a problem with that because you're a big man with big hands. Exactly. I, I like totally a lot of gear. Fine, but uh, but smaller fellas like Eric, who's who's out of frame right now, um, would <laughs> really benefit from a lens like this. Um, so uh, you, I've, we've, we've got some of the, the images that you've, that you've shot here scattered around in front of us, but we've also got them um, uh, on, the, on the screen here, yeah. which means that we'll be able to bring them up. Uh, so as, I've been shooting for, for probably three months with this lens. Um, so the way, the way Tamron tend to work is they'll send out a prototype version of the lens, which is the one we've got over here. Uh, so it's not finished like a, a, an end product lens would be. It's all shiny rather than matte finish and um, rather than having it printed, printed on numbers. On, yeah, yeah, it's just little stickers and arrows. This is for this. Um, so I get to shoot with that for a little while. And then as soon as the first production models are available, uh, they send out one of those for me to uh, try and get the majority of the shots. Um, okay. Get a bit of a feel for how the lens is going to go and then come and take photos. Um, the um, slight dilemma we always seem to have with uh, with these uh, product launches is the launches come out um, October, November, yeah, pre-Christmas, pre-Christmas uh, <laughs> most years, um, but the shots have to be shot um, many months before that. So a little bit like a, um, a bikini calendar shoot. You know, you've got to, You've got to shoot those photos in winter for, so they're ready for summer. Um, and it would have been winter in Melbourne. Um, it's always winter in Melbourne, let's face it. At least that. once a day. Yeah, that's it. Uh, no, well, summer, hopefully this year, will land on a weekend. That's right, Melbourne. yeah, yeah. if we're lucky. Uh, so you shot in winter, yeah. um, so uh, shorter days, so you had yeah. less time. Yeah. Um, obviously, I can see that there's some sort of evening shots as well. Um so pops of colour and, and stuff around Melbourne. Where, where did you shoot and how did you find it? Well, first up, <clears throat> one of the, the challenges with shooting a project like this is um, photo manipulation is not really welcomed. So uh, basically not a lot of Photoshop is, is allowed. Um, we want to be able to give a representation of what the lens itself can produce, not the artist behind the lens. Mm. Um, so it's a challenging project to shoot because you're trying to compete with photos on the internet. Uh, and make the lens look good. We know the majority of photos on the internet have a fair to middling amount of work done to them mm. to make them look the way they are. Um, so we try and shoot images that um, produce you know, quality straight out of camera. That often means really picking your time of day. You know, trying to get out early in the morning if possible, trying to get in there just as the blue hour and the evening comes by. You've got some nice colors, you've got some, you've got some nice light to work with, and then hopefully that aids you in getting um, the best possible shots. Um, so I've been mostly shooting around what's an area called the Docklands area in Melbourne, uh, mostly because it's an urban environment, which is what they wanted the shots to be, but it's not as busy as downtown Melbourne, which can be a bit of a nightmare to get around in. Um, and uh, you, know, it, you can't set up a tripod in, with people flying all around, it's just not safe. So it's great fun and it's an honor to be able to do it, 
But it's reasonably stressful as well. Yeah. <laughs> Man like yourself would just uh, <clears throat> smash that. Um, should we have a look at some of the photos? If you'd like to, sure. Um, so let's go to the first image. Um, now this is by chance. Now the, the images we're showing today are probably not the images they're going to be using for launch. These are just ones I've just grabbed a handful of. Absolutely. And there may be a little bit extra photo because uh, the reason that I'm saying this is the first one is actually black and white. Yep. Only because I was doing this shot for myself. It's a bit of a street photography photo. It kind of looks nice in black and white. It actually looks okay in color, but the mood is nicer in black and white. So let's bear in mind that you may not have seen any of these images um, as the finals that Tamron are using. Yeah, you get world but exclusive, dude. This, that, thank yeah. you. Uh, but these have all been shot with the 1750 F4. Um, what did you shoot on? A Sony? A uh, Sony A7R4, uh, yep. Yep, great. It's yours. You should know what it is. Well, you, you did borrow two did cameras, so uh, I was just seeing which one. Uh, so yes, well, let's 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 roll through some of the images. Um, this first shot, as you suggested, is is obviously in black and white. Yeah. Um, where did you shoot this? What was your inspiration here? Well, this is actually shot uh, near the new Royal Children's Hospital here in Melbourne, oh, uh, okay. which has got some very interesting architecture to walk around. And um, one of the one of the briefs was they wanted interesting architectural shots. Um, it's a, a good urban environment. Now. I'm, I'm predominantly a, a people photographer, so uh, as such, I'm always looking for light. Mm. And light is first and foremost to everything for me. So wherever I'm walking, the first thing I'm looking for is where, where's some good light. And what I'll often do is I'll, I'll find some good light and stop and wait. And it's exactly the situation here. We've got some great lines and shapes mm. and also some great light. So it's a good combination to have. And then it's just a matter of waiting for a, a person or a couple of people to walk through see what happens, see what sort of shapes we can get, see what sort of mood we can create in the shot and hopefully get something good. I also say there's something about, there's a cafe here on the mm. left-hand side it's and it kind of reminds me of that, that old, that was a, that was a Bogart. Yes. Yeah, sitting at the, sitting at the, yeah. There was the just Legends something, or something. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. In, in, in there. James and, Dean. Exactly. And, and there's just enough detail in here to keep you interested and, and sort of cast your eye in here. Obviously, the hero of the shot being this gentleman. Yeah. I love, I love the massive shadow. Um, but but even just like casting. the separation of the arm and the shadow. There. Yeah. Now, I mean, otherwise, it's a big blob. Yeah. yeah, so just having that little tiny framing, little even the, the deeper that you get looking into this photo, yeah. some of this reflection through the middle here um, that's peering around the corner of what's going on beyond this yeah. uh, this lit image. It's yeah, it's it's, it's a nice image. It's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a it's a standard everyday shoot shoot a shoot a, a, a street photo, a street photography shot. Oh, I think it's a little bit more than that. Um, I do like the little rim light around him, so it yeah. separates him from the background. It's just you know, what's it? Lights, yeah. elements in the scene, and subject coming together, and you get a shot that's got some interest. And I think that's what we're looking for. Um, when I go out to take photos for myself personally, I'm not necessarily looking for the world's greatest shot. I'm looking for something that kind of speaks a little bit to me. That that res oh, that's, where elements come together to combine and make it a more interesting shot. Well, I think this is a cracker. Let's have a look at the next one. So this is actually a, a, a paid model shot because we had to uh, get some people's faces in the photographs because it, it's um, at 17 to 50. At 50 mil, it's actually a really handy lens for photographing people, mm. uh, especially if you're, you're, you're traveling, you know, and you're meeting people. Uh, and I'm a sucker for reflections, reflections and shadows. So um, th this, is, this, this photo still needs a little bit of cleaning up. Uh, if I was to do post-production work on this, this one here, um, I would be cleaning up some of the you know, specks of dirt. Yeah, you know, there's like a couple of hairs and bits of sh and stuff of on the jacket there, and that's that's the work you would normally do in post production to clean up an image. But it's just a simple photo. A bit once again, good light, interesting mm -hmm. subject, nice colours, yeah. shapes, composition is great. Yeah, it's just and it's good eye connections. It just makes for a moderately interesting image. It's a very sharp image yeah. as well. How did you find this lens for sharpness? Uh, I found it exceptionally good actually. It, it's my preconceived notion when you hear, okay, so 17 to 50 f4, it's not a 2.8 or 2.8 to 4, it's a fixed f4 lens. You say, okay, well, it's probably going to be a, a more of a budget lens. Okay, so I had affordable, we'll affordable is a good word for it. <coughs> yeah. uh, so I have a, an expectation of what that's going to look like in my mm. photos, but the sharpness wise, I mean, this sharp as a tack. I mean, yeah. there's this, the, you, you can't fault the, no. the, the individual hair detail is, is, is really crazy. quite remarkable. So, 
Um, uh, probably pleasantly surprised is not um, the, the, the nicest way of saying, but delighted. I think it's it's, it's everything I would need it's, out of a lens to be. It's what we have come to expect from Tamron now. Absolutely, it's great glass. You know, there are there are no cheap lenses yep. anymore. Yep. This is this is quality glass, uh, and I don't just say that because because I'm paid to. It, it's just fact. Uh, we hear it time and time and time and time again. People are just amazed by the quality of the yeah, glass coming yeah. out of Tamron. I mean, as, as a working days. professional, there's nothing that can't do that. I, there's no. nothing that's doing that I wouldn't need as a portrait shooter or as a travel photographer, which is what I mainly do. Mm. Um, it does everything I need. Mm. Now, if I was an astro photographer, I might say, well, I want something that opens up a little bit more than Yeah, before. I need more light yeah. to come in or... Right, yeah. tool for the job sometimes. But yeah, as an all-round general purpose lens that gives me... Wonderful wide angle. I love wide angle stuff. I mean, the that wider is, the better. That is kind of your shtick. It's my shtick is really wide I angle think, stuff. Uh, Tamron had a, uh, for uh, DSLR, you were renowned for the 1530. Love my you, 1530, yeah. You, yep. sh- you were the only person or the first person that I knew um, that shot super, super wide angle portraits. And you go, whoa, portraits, wide angle. Uh, we'll we'll bring up an image here of an example of of something that Glenn would have shot wide angle, just so that uh, so that you can see for yourself what he does. There's a, there's a reason for that. I mean, obviously, I, I see the world a certain way, but um, if we want photos to be good, we need to change the perspective that we see the world at. Mm. Now, that means a normal standing height and a kind of a normal vision. Yes, yes, we see wide, but we kind of it's not it's not a wide angle perspective we see a very narrow focus in front of us so we see the world always in a certain way so whenever you're trying to make photographs more interesting changing that perspective that's why drone photos are so popular of course straight down drone shot is something yeah. we just don't see yeah it's and it really yeah brain, it really it? really it really adds impact so as a photographer i'm always trying to get high or really low you know and shooting really really wide and close to a subject gives that perspective that we just don't get with our normal eye and it gives us a chance to produce a photograph that has a little bit more impact perfect let's jump into the next yeah so again just a, a another um find the light and uh, get mm. the get the model just to pose into that into that light and to, it was a really really windy day we had we had moments of sun so the hair has been blowing around absolutely <laughs> everywhere so just in the chance of her trying to get the hair off her face mm. take the shot and I think there's a there's a tension and an interest in the image. But again, I think the reason I chose this shot is again the sharpness. It's just and beautifully again, sharp. And again, we're talking about an, a lens that is f four, but I see a beautiful fall off. I yeah. see this oh, bokeh yeah. in the background. This is separation of of model and and an environment. Yeah, yeah. A- and that's at f four. So don't be afraid. Um, to think that you know, you, oh, I must have uh, you know, well, frankly, point, point I nine five. I don't think I, um, can, I don't think I can shoot at one point eight. Yeah, alone, you, alone, but yeah, yeah. it gives it. There is a sharpness the right the way through the uh, the model um, from her eye to her elbow is is perfect. Yeah. And, and that's justice. roughly the same plane, though. So exactly. That, that certainly, absolutely. But works. if you were shooting at at you know one point eight or you one know, of those eyes is probably going to be out of focus. Yeah, or slightly out exactly. Of focus. Yeah. You wouldn't have that 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 sharpness from here to her elbow. Her elbow would be out. Uh, I, I just think it's great. So well, I'm going to say, as I get older, mm. um, I find it easy to shoot with a slightly a slightly bigger aperture because mm. it it gives me wiggle room for smaller a little aperture. Bit. Sorry, it's me. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, bigger number. Bigger number. Big, <laughs> but look, people always struggle with aperture with the, with the numbering system. Uh, I. I like to simplify photography to its, its absolute base. So I, my, my motto has always been, this is why I still get, con- not confused, but why I misspeak, bigger number, bigger depth, mm-hmm. smaller number, smaller depth. Mm-hmm. So when I'm teaching photography, I try and get that mantra into people's yeah. heads because that they can visualize number and result. Yeah. So bigger number, bigger depth, smaller number, smaller depth. Choose. Well, I think you've got the number right here. Yeah, so, and, and uh, the thing is, um, once again, though, choose your scene properly. Yeah, the, this scene has a lot of depth to it, so we can take advantage of that F4 and get the get the effect. Absolutely. Uh, walk us through this one. This is uh, down the dock lens again, just just on blue hour. Um, 
What's the what's the state? It's near Marvel Stadium. <coughs> we can't say you can't, say, can't say, say Marvel, but that's an advantage. It's completely washed it's, out. It's it's washed out so, in the background. It's, a bit, it's sharp. Over, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's washed out. Yeah. <laughs> so the logo, the, there's, there was one big logo in here that I was really concerned about. It was a couple. This, but this one over here. Mostly, obs- and, mostly obscured with focus and and yes. um, and uh, and exposure. So it's just again, I love reflections. I mean, uh, so, as I said before, trying to change perspective. So this is a very simple photo. Mm. It's just leading lines, vanishing point, and a bit of a reflection to bring in some of the colour uh, from the interior, which was warm, yeah. and the reflection. And it's just a, it's just a lovely mood shot. If you're a travel, once again, this is a great travel photography lens. So you want to capture what's it like being in Melbourne? What, what's the colours and life like? Bang! This does that perfectly for it. Perfect. Uh, this one is the shop. The, it's called the shop tower. Yeah. So I'm so old. That I remember central? when this wasn't in a building. <laughs> so, oh really? Yeah. Before they before, before they, they closed, closed it, it in a building. Protected from the yeah. aliens. So I used to when I was uh, I've been in the photo industry since 1982, and um, I used to walk past this building to get to my train station every of night. Of course. Yeah. So um, now this is one of the images they're not going to use for. Um, for, for this angle, the, the, well, because, like, for, because it's, it's got, got the, so many brands. It's in got there. the little Little Mermaid from Disney there. Uh, you well, all, all these other ones, these 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 uh, neon signs on the side are all kind of um, yeah, not Generic. brand. Uh, yeah, and they're Legendary. not brand name, yeah. big brand, name, well well known brand names. So, yeah. uh, but I, what I love about this shot is again color angle. Um, I actually really like those neon signs on the right hand side. Mm, there. They've yeah, got so add, 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 add a add a yeah, and the add a, a mystique. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all this sort of stuff. You think about what's going on, and, and all the angles of the of the um, escalators in the back there. And it's not often you see a building in a building. Uh, no, absolutely. And again, we talk about um, what were your what was your aperture here? I can see that it's slightly fallen off behind. Yeah. Um, but to get the shot tower itself and these, while they're on a slightly similar focal plane. I'd say these will be a lot closer than that is. Yep. So what were you shooting at here, F8? No idea. No um, idea. I don't know. We'll, we'll <coughs> check that. We'll, we'll do the playback. And the reason being, <laughs> as a photographer, I'm not focused on numbers per se. Mm-hmm. When I'm shooting, I'm, I'm kind of in the zone. I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on effect. So I would shoot a shot and, and if it looked I needed more, I would add more depth yep. to it. But because I'm shooting at 17 mil, and the subjects are a reasonable distance away. Most of it's going to be in focus be, yeah. anyway. So it might only be four. It might be 5.6 because we're inside and it's quite oh, dark. So um, it wouldn't surprise me if I shot this at F4. Mm-hmm. But again, 17. And this is a great thing to do. If you're shooting, I spent a lot of time in places like India where there's things that happen. A, it's a really tight space and stuff's happening really, really fast. Um, but maybe in less light than you'd ideally like. Mm-hmm. If you have to shoot at, say, 400 ISO F4, that wide angle is going to make sure most stuff's going to be in focus anyway. So it's Perfect. quite a forgiving way to shoot. Great. Now this is um, actually downtown Melbourne for once. I uh, this is actually a corner of uh, Federation Square. That's a square. Uh, square. Yeah, so it's actually a square building, but the angle I shot it on made it look like a pyramid. You know, it's just so we're playing with lines, we're playing with shapes, we're playing with colours. And it's, it's really, it really is and light, of course. It's really quite as simple as that. The the thing with this shot that it's not complex, but that takes a little bit of time to do is to wait till the clouds are in a formation that's interesting, and that's yeah. it. But yeah. um, being that it's blowing a gale, they're moving pretty fast, so you've got plenty of opportunity. But uh, again, um, I really like the ability to create something very different from what's in front of our eyes. So we see this big glass square building. Well, how can we make that look different? And playing with angles, playing with your perception and, and your, your distance relation to it can add something different to your photos. Look up is a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When in travel photography, I'd say to everyone, don't forget to look up. Don't just look at what's happening in front of you, what's happening above you and, and, and what can you play with and make it interesting there. Perfect. Well, what have we got here? This is tram line. <laughs> yes, this is da- downtown Melbourne again. This is shooting up a street called Collins it's Street. Collins street it's actually Collins going up a hill. Yes. Now, the advantage um, of shooting going up a hill, it, it, it creates uh, a vanishing point of that. If this is a flat road, you would kind of lose some of that leading line perspective of the tram tracks going up because the, the camera would kind of make it look almost like it's going away and down from you. So because it's going up a hill, it creates another line to work with. 
uh, shooting at uh, f16 in the situation to produce the lovely star bursts on the uh, uh, on the lights there, and then trying not to get hit by a tram. So yes, yeah, we can see there's actually lines coming all the way through down through car, here. That's, that's, that's oh, there's tram, a tram yeah. so, there, so. and you got cars coming the other way. You got cars yeah. going behind. Yeah, so uh, lots, away so from this you. is like a thirty second long exposure. Yeah. So in that yeah. thirty seconds, the cars and the trams uh, have gone past, trying not to get hit by the tram. Mm -hmm. um, a tram with a light rail, if anyone right. doesn't know what that is. And um, yeah, it just creates a, 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 an interesting, in, uh, and once you're shooting, they blew out just after the sun set, the lights have come on on the buildings, the lights are on the streets, cars have got their lights on, but you've still got a bit of life in the sky. It's not pitch black. Beautiful shot. Um, again, trying to find different ways of showcasing a lens and, um, and, and not showing brand names. So shooting with a slightly slower shutter speed here allows the car to have a little bit of blur to it. It shows motion and movement of the car, kind of hides the brand a little bit as well, which is good. Um, but we've got this, this beautiful overpass, which is interesting shapes and patterns. And again, down low, um, the camera's actually resting on the ground, angled straight up. So I'm shooting of course. You know, like this, screen out and- um, And waiting. Yeah, waiting for, uh, yeah, and you know what? Frankly, you're sitting there waiting for a red car to go by. Yeah. So lots of white cars and trucks and things, but I'm um, to the red car. Next. Yeah, just sit there and wait, Next. wait, wait, and um, get it. You got that, that fraction of a second to get the shot. That's a great shot. Uh, Docklands. Yep, down at our beautiful Docklands here in Melbourne, uh, a fairly new area to Melbourne. Sort of over the last ten years has been. Uh, being built up, so most of these buildings weren't here, sort of pre twenty twenty even. Mm. So it's always a great uh, to go to new areas of town that are being developed because there's always new and interesting buildings going up. Uh, you get there at sunset and you hope for a little bit of uh, a bit of luck with some interesting clouds and interesting lights. And just in that time between, once again, just as the sun's about to set, the building lights are coming on. Slow shutter speed to get that kind of smooth effect on the water. And I'm actually shooting from a little bridge on this one to get that little bit of elevation yeah. to, to once again create those leading See it lines. And those moving clouds. Yeah. That's yeah. great. It's 30 seconds again. Yeah. We're back by the river. We're back by the Melbourne's beautiful river, the Yarra River. Yep. So it's just down, there's an area called South Bank and a very busy area. Lots of people and scooters and um, lots of life and activity. But currently they've got all these beautiful lights strung up between the trees and it kind of gives a, a nice warm, <laughs> on a, a, a bitterly freezing cold night, it kind of gives a warm appearance. And again, the, uh, the I love the, what I like about this shot is this person coming towards the where this shadow is um, of the legs is coming through. That's from somebody coming down with a scooter with a light on the background. Uh, so it's just yeah. lighting them for a fraction of a second, gives us a highlight difference from the rest of the scene and just creates another set of lines to work with. So simple shots, but interesting slightly slow shutter speed so we blur everyone's faces so there's no problems with our issues perfect bit of reflection here and, and again you know, yeah what, what i'm what i'm always looking for is is shooting scenes differently now this is the, the city reflected in a, in a window beautiful blue sky and that contrast between the red neon sign and the blue sky simple shot it, but I just like it. I, don't, I just like I like the I like the the font they've used for the oh, burger sign, and it just makes things interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. simple. And if you're traveling around and doing lots of photographs, uh, if, you, if this is your travel lens, you want to showcase what the scene, what the place is like. So lots of these detail shots are really important. Well, we have here this. Uh, this is a, a image of uh, yeah, with reflection and symmetry and. It kind of brings, brings lots of it together. We're talking about yeah. you know, getting down a really low angle to change perspective, mm -hmm. shooting with it. I think this is actually about 20 mil or 22 okay. mil. So it's not, not, not as wide as the lens can go. And the reason for that is um, kind of get the space between the pillars of the columns. So they're, they're, they're working together. Uh, this is one of Melbourne's iconic buildings, but it doesn't um, have anyone's logo. So it kind of it's works. And so simply it's, it's a polished yeah. normal floor, but getting down low gives this reflection. By chance, I was out shooting with my son that day, so I said, uh, "Just have a walk through there, kiddo." <laughs> and uh, but make sure you're, you're walking exactly in the middle yeah. and exactly in line with that window uh, or that window shape. Oh, your and, story uh, walking, pal. Yeah, pretty much. And, and, and again, we just want to work with all these 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 vanishing point lines, reflections, warmth of color, a little bit of movement. How many um, takes did you? 
Um, <laughs> one, maybe one two. Or two. Yeah, no. but, but I probably would have shot a, a little burst of four or five images okay. as he walks away. So there'd be, there'd be what I'm looking for is that gap in the window to of try course, and get the yeah. space. And as people walk, they tend to wobble a little bit anyway. So just trying to get that, the one that was as central as possible. Um, but yeah, you're probably going to get kicked out by security if you take too many shots. That's so you've got to get in quick. A yeah, bit of guerrilla photography. That's great. Um, thank you, Glenn, for running us through some of these uh, images that you've shot on the new 17 to 50 from Tamara. Was there anything else that you wanted to tell us about before we wrap up? Um, no, I just want to say thank you. Thanks to Tamron for the opportunity again to uh, to play with this gear. I always enjoy trying out new lenses and being challenged to take photographs that um, stand alone without a lot of extra uh, extra photoshopping work. Um, so it's, it's just a great opportunity and I uh, love doing it for you guys. Leaving the talent in the camera. And, yeah, uh, there's not much out of it. Oh! Oh! You're, you're bringing your talent to the camera and then you don't have to do it in post. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for, for watching and thank you for coming in, Glenn, and telling us about it. We will uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you.